Thank you for joining us today. I would like to continue our topics in Sage 100C manufacturing. And today I'd like to talk about forms and reporting. So our agenda is pretty simple. We're gonna talk about how to print work tickets. We're gonna talk about printing picking sheets and some of the reports that you may look at in Sage 100C manufacturing. We're gonna start with printing work tickets. So here I am in Sage 100. I'm in the manufacturing module and let's just go ahead and go into work ticket edit here for a moment. And I'm gonna call up an existing work ticket. So let's just call up this work ticket on the edit screen. And I'm gonna hit the printer icon here. And that's going to take me to work ticket printing. I'm just gonna preview this for you so you can see what it looks like. Now this is an unmodified forms right out of the box, but this is a crystal report and you can make changes. So, you know, you put your logo on. You can also print any of the fields that are on the work ticket in barcode using Crystal Reports and the Azalea font that ships with Sage 100. But as you can see here, this is just an information about all the steps that are on the work ticket. It includes the instructions or the text for each of the steps the parts that are required for each of the steps that came over from the template as we've talked about before. Some people might call this a traveler as a document that would travel along with the steps as they're being performed. So you can call it a work ticket or you can call it a traveler if you'd like. So I got at this by opening the work ticket and hitting the printer icon. Another way to print the work tickets is to go to manufacturing in the main menu, main section, and open work ticket printing. This function is very much like the functionality that you see in sales order and purchase order for sales order printing, picking sheet printing, purchase order printing, those kinds of things. This menu is designed to only print for those work tickets that have not been printed previously. So if you're doing batch printing of work tickets, this is where you can go. And just like those other modules, you can do a selection and then hit the select button to reselect that work ticket for printing. So once again, I'm gonna do the same one, but I'm gonna start at step 000 and then go to the other steps. Let me blank that out again so I can get my, my magnifying glass. So we'll select that one and we'll go 1671 to that one. And then we would hit select and then preview that and we'll end up with the same work ticket we just had a moment ago, as you can see. The next thing we're gonna discuss is printing picking sheets. In Sage 100 then, we're gonna go into sales order and we can do this via sales order entry or we can choose the picking sheet printing program either way. So I'm just going to choose picking sheet printing. And let's go ahead and choose that order number that we were just looking at. So 1671. Now what I want to show you here is there is a manufacturing button here which adds additional options for picking sheet printing. So the first question is, do we want to skip purchased items? So if we say yes to exclude all purchased items, if it looks at the parts list for the work ticket and the PO button is checked for the item to be purchased, we're not gonna print a picking sheet. Now that makes sense, right? If we're going to purchase the item for the work ticket, we're not gonna pull it off the shelf and, and, and use it on the work ticket. You can also exclude the parent item you can exclude chargeable or non-chargeable items as well. So let's go ahead and, and uh, print this. Well, let's take a look at these other options. We can also print quantity used for purchased components, quantity required for purchased components, or balance required for purchased components. So you have options if you do want to print the purchased components, you can. But again, I think it makes the most sense to exclude those. Once again, just uh, standard Sage 100, 
This is a, uh, a crystal report and can be modified as such, so you can make changes. But as you can see here, we get the, the list of the componentry that is required for that work ticket. The last thing I want to discuss are some of the manufacturing reports, and we're just kind of go through them just to take a look at them. Here I am back at Sage 100. We're going to go to manufacturing and reports. We're going to look at the report section. So I'm just going to go through these uh, relatively quickly, talk about some of the options and things like that. But let's start with the work ticket WIP reconciliation report. And I'm going to print this for all work tickets. Now, I do want to talk about reconcile date to a current date here. You can't choose a date here if you're using dynamic inventory, which I highly recommend that you do. Dynamic inventory is this function in Sage 100C manufacturing that has inventory transactions occur immediately as soon as they're entered. So you can put a cutoff date here. Otherwise, it's just all dates. And this is the report that you would use to reconcile the, the work and process balances to the GL. So here is the work ticket class, custom manufacturing. And the reason they're broken out by class is because the class work and process account can be different for each work ticket class. So here's your labor costs, your direct charges, your total costs, and your total work in process. So this $7,214.73 should agree to the GL. Let's look at the work ticket transaction detail report. So this will show all of the transactions that have occurred on your work tickets. Something I haven't talked about previously, just so you know, is that work tickets can reside either in the work ticket entry file or they reside in history. So once a work ticket has been completed, they could be purged and they could be moved to history. So they're no longer in work ticket entry. Well, this report can access data from both data entry and history, or you can choose to pull the information just from the data entry file, or you can choose to pull the information just from history. So whatever you choose here. So I'm going to choose just the open, and we're just going to use this one work ticket that, uh, that we've been talking about. So let me select that work ticket 1671, step 000, we'll go through step seven. And you can filter based on what kind of detail you want to see. So this is just a regurgitation of all of the transactions that have occurred on this work ticket. Let's go ahead and blow this one up. You can see this is a crystal report, so it is customizable. But we have our work ticket, our step number, and then the transaction dates and the kind of transaction it is. So whether it's uh, labor or direct cost or its parts issues, you see all of the transactions associated with the work ticket. And then you get a report total for each of the kinds of costs that are associated with that work ticket. Open purchase order by work ticket. So just like we have an open purchase order by item report, Sage 100C gives you an open purchase order by work ticket report, so you can see what items are being purchased for the work tickets. We'll just preview this. Once again, this is a crystal report, can be modified, and you can see the work ticket number here and then the items that are associated with it that are on purchase orders and the purchase order number on down the line. Work ticket profit analysis report, analogous to going to the profit analysis tab on the work ticket and taking a look at it. We'll just go ahead and print this so you can see it, but it's going to look very much like that tab. 
So work ticket uh, 1498. Now let's get to uh, maybe a more current work ticket. Let's do that. Work our way back a couple here. There we go. So we might see budget amount, current, projected, those kinds of things. Let me run this again. I just want to run it for that work ticket number. Notice that we had both history and open here. So once again, we can look at it for history work tickets, but let's just run it for 1671 again so we can we can see that. All right. There we go. Huh. Still all zeros, but that's all right. So you get the idea. Okay, moving on. Procurement advice report. So this is going to take a look at your work tickets and your items that are required for the work ticket that haven't been issued to the work ticket yet and let you know anything that's short. So let's just preview this. We're excluding items that are already on purchase order. So for this work ticket, you can see for this item, we're required one, we've used one, so that's fine. But on this line, we require one, we've, we've used zero. Quantity on hand is 98, on sales orders 105, so we have a net available of minus seven. So we recommend that you acquire a quantity of one of that item for this work ticket. Now this prints by work ticket, not by item. So you could have the same item on a different work ticket with the same number. So be cognizant of that. But you do have some options on how you wanna sort this. Dava validation report. So I have a lot of clients that use Sage 100 manufacturing that don't look at this report. And I'm just gonna show it to you. I honestly am not sure what you would do with it other than to look at it. And there, this is what's supposed to happen. There are supposed to be zero errors. But what this report will show you are any errors associated with any of the lines of your work tickets, work tickets themselves and lines of the work ticket. Sometimes what happens, the relationship between a line of a work ticket, which is a sales order line, and a line of a purchase order get mismatched and it would show up on that. So it will make sure that the line on the purchase order points to the line of the sales order and that the line of the sales order points to the line of the purchase order. And if they don't match, if, if they're not pointing to each other correctly, it would show up on the report. It'll also check for other kinds of errors. For example, if uh, there's a purchase order line that's pointing to a work ticket and the work ticket's been deleted. Now, when that happens, it's supposed to unlink from the line on the PO, but maybe that didn't happen. Or if the quantities are different or the costs are different, those kinds of things. So it's a good news that I don't have any errors, but it means I can't show you any of the information. If you print the report and there are errors, sometimes we have to go into data file display and maintenance and correct them. And this is not something that I would recommend clients in general do on their own. So this would be something you'd wanna call us and ask for our assistance on. So I'm gonna run the material shortage report here. This is similar to the procurement advice report. This will show you any items that are short, but it'll also show you the POs that are required. And just close this. Now there are other reports that you can run by work ticket just I'm not gonna go through all of them here. I think it's important that you look at these reports on your own with your data. The important reports I think you should look at absolutely are the WIP reconciliation report. If there's an issue, you wanna look at the work ticket transaction detail report. And then frequently you should look at the data validation report to make sure you don't have any errors. So to summarize, we took a look at printing work tickets. So we can print the work ticket they're very much like a traveler, if that's what, the way you want to think of them. You can print the work tickets. The work ticket printing 
program is a CRISTA report, so it can be modified. I didn't do that in this demonstration, but you could set it up so it page breaks between steps, so you get a different sheet for each step, those kinds of things. You can print picking sheets for work tickets for the material, and once again, send those out to pull the material for the work tickets. And then there's a whole myriad of, of the reports in Sage 100C manufacturing that you can look at. Lastly, just our contact information. So you can see our link to our YouTube channel. We are on LinkedIn. Our website is www.nimsassociates.com. And if you have any questions, you can email us at erp at nimsassociates.com or call 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you very much.